خبر از شما هلمند کندهار کابل جاین است خبر ندارم چرا در افغانستان کشور شما For all the distance between their life and mine, there was still a space for girls to share a giggle. What do you do for for entertainment, for fun? <laughs> Rex Afghan? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Rex uh, Europa? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> At moments like this, you feel a shared humanity, no matter how different our lives. But I'm leaving this village, they will stay in lives that are, for the most part, determined from the day of birth. Pai Kotal will never make the news, but our next stop has Bamiyan. For nearly 2,000 years, pilgrims and poets flocked here to marvel at two stone Buddhas hewn from the mountainside. They were carved when Bamiyan was an important center for Buddhism, hundreds of years before the birth of Islam. Then in 2001, the Taliban condemned them as idols, an affront to Islam. <laughs> Afghans lost one of their most precious relics. So did the world. But now the people of Bamiyan want the world to come back to visit. It's absolutely fantastic that they actually have a tourism office here in Bamiyan. I think it's the only one in Afghanistan. You can see we're going through all these back alleys to try to find the tourist office. <laughs> and the roads aren't so good either. This road is terrible. <laughs> Once I found the office, there was another surprise. I'd met Guru Hussain two years ago when he was studying to be a tour guide in Bamiyan. And there was more to come. Oh, ski boots. Yeah. Look at all the ski boots. A lot of people go skiing here. Yeah. Who goes skiing? Afghans? Afghans and internationals. Really? Extraordinary. This is, after all, a country of mountains. But how do you get here when there are no commercial flights and the main road from Kabul isn't safe? But that wasn't stopping Gul Hussein's dream. I, uh, if we talk about all Afghanistan, it's difficult. But when we come to talk about Bamiyan and Bamiyan, it's no problem. It's Bamiyan is it's it's peace province. Uh, so how many tourists have you had this uh, winter? This winter for East King. I had two uh, uh, real tourists, uh, those who are, one was from Australia, one was from UK. Two real tourists? Yeah. The last time I saw you, you talked about your dream. Yes. Which yeah. was? Which was tour company. To make a tour company. <laughs> yeah. So my hope that one day my company should be famous for, for all Afghanistan, not for only Bamiya. To help improve those statistics, I decided to be the third and last tourist of the season. With the snows all but gone, we had to walk to one of the furthest peaks. Fortunately, the Afghan ski lift was working. That's the donkey. Gafar, my driver, gave it a go, reminding me of Afghan's fearlessness and enthusiasm. Way to go, Gafar! These Afghan boys tagged along with us, taking to the slopes with whatever they can find at home. The littlest is sliding down the slopes in his mother's shoes. Look at that, a bit of wood, a rubber boot, a bit of metal. Afarin Mohammedan. 
Yeah. Tell me, Asif, why you like skiing so much? <laughs> what does it feel like when you're out there skiing? May this country give him the peace and prosperity, just enough to make him a ski champion someday. If tourism is to work, they'll need a few good hotels. There are some, but none quite like the Silk Road. It's not just the location, it's the owners. Marsal? Hi! 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 And you also... I've known Marsal for years. She first came here as a journalist. It's still so amazing to see you here. Is it? Yes. Why? Well, you're the only Japanese sushi chef in Afghanistan. I trained some of the more Afghan, yeah. Two, yeah. two ladies I trained. Oh. So a little bit I'm, I'm working with them, yeah. And I'm very happy to teaching for the Afghans to helping them to more develop. Marcel, I have to say that every time I see you, mm -hmm. you seem a little bit more Afghan. Is it? Yes. I hope this, I want to keep it for the, like, a falling ladies. <laughs> you want to be Japanese? I'm still Japanese, really? but, yeah. Yeah, mine is a little Afghan, of course, yeah. I love here, I love Afghanistan. I'm living here, yeah. Mursal fell in love with this country on her first visit in the 80s. She came back to report after the attacks of September 11th and found more than a story. But then you also fell in love yeah. with an Afghan. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a good. So yes, you know, this is now if 9-11 is not happening, so nothing's happening, you know? Oh. <laughs> I changed my, you know, uh, life for 9-11. Are you Muslim now? I'm Muslim. Oh, you had to convert to get married. Yes, it is. Oh, but course. it's not very good Muslim, a little bit lazy Muslim. <laughs> Husband and I hated me sometimes, you know. <laughs> Yeah, well, I try my best, yeah. I think if, as long as God knows you're trying, Marcel. Yes, it is. And, and that your husband knows you're trying. Mm. Marcel invited me to stay for dinner. How could I refuse? Well, it's, it's delicious. But what's also delicious mm -hmm. is to see a panchiri yeah. eating Japanese food. That's me from a girl. Honum Majopolis. I will eat Savol Shemias. Two bakazoish on that thing. I remember showing you Gagar was small as it was all. Mr. Folder couldn't meet because your child doim, the figures worship, Kujovim, Kaibohorim. What did your, your family say, Sabur? Because in Afghanistan, you don't marry a person, you marry the family. You marry into the culture. Each work could almost kill out as I want another shell, Tobol and Nadoran could almost kill out each work. Chirok doim or Moda Buddha. Bahostoi, Abroni Budan, Islam Budan, Muslim Budan, or Moda Buddha. I couldn't help but smile. A Japanese married to an Afghan from Ponchir eating sushi and bamiyan with a Canadian. A lovely way to end the evening. It was the last day of my trip before heading back to Kabul. But I couldn't leave Bamiyan without making one last stop. No matter how many times you see these empty niches, they still take your breath away. And every time I come to Bamiyan, no matter where I am in this valley, you feel the presence of these Buddhas.
Abbas, a student I'd met years ago, is now a tour guide here. Some interesting things, like this is a uh, Buddha feet. Oh, the you can feet. see, yeah. But uh, what pretty destroyed by the oh. Taliban army in 2001. But you know, when you look, yeah, and to think it was the world's largest standing Buddha. Buddha. Yeah. So, so it was so important to the world's heritage, to Afghanistan's heritage. Yeah. And around here, it was the Buddhism temples. Uh, for Buddhists, on that time, it was so holy place. But in the Taliban's extreme creed, all this was sacrilege and had to be destroyed. Surprisingly, the evidence is still here. I will show to you some fragments of the dynamites. They fire, they use bullets, they used... Artillery piece. Art artillery, artillery pieces, yeah, different. Oh, you know, metal the, pieces. Like a fuse. Oh, a fuse. Yeah. It took a long time to destroy them. One month. One month? Yeah. One month. Those were very dark days. Yeah. It is so dark days. Mm, terrible. The best way to get a real feel for these colossal Buddhas is to climb the rough stairway hewn out of bare rock. I've stopped counting. <laughs> I've done a lot. More to come. Please. No. It was we well worth it. The Buddha statue. From here, the valley seemed so serene, so peaceful. But even here, in this most hopeful of places, I still found fear about what lies ahead. At night, you go home and you worry that the war will come again, the Taliban will come back. Yeah, maybe. But you will stay here with your Buddhas? You're not going to leave Afghanistan? Maybe, yes, maybe no. Maybe when the Taliban comes to uh, Bamiyan, capture me and kill me, because they thinking uh, we are connecting with foreigners. But this is my select, because new generation, they are thinking we should uh, improve our country. Bamiyan is a place where Afghans can find space to dream. But dreams quickly run into limits here. Bamiyan can only realize its promise if the rest of Afghanistan does too. Kabul, journey's end. A city bursting with life, bursting at its seams. I arrived in the capital with a feeling of happiness, to have made a wonderful journey. But it was a feeling soon tinged with sadness, as bad news came through. Reports from Mazar Sharif say that some of those killed were beheaded. So at least nine people have been killed in the southern city of Kandahar. Attacked a NATO base in the western city of Herat. Violence had been only a short distance behind on my trip. Not long after I left Mazari Sharif, the UN compound was stormed by a mob. Kandahar saw multiple suicide bombings. Even peaceful Herat came under attack. I wanted to spend my last hours in Afghanistan at one of my favorite places, the old royal palace on the edge of the city. I remember it in its prime a magnificent building overlooking Kabul. But like so much here, years of conflict have taken a terrible toll. An Afghan friend once told me this palace seemed to be weeping tears for the country and its people. There is something about Afghanistan, and I've seen it again on this journey. It's Afghans with their sense of pride and honor, great sense of humor, sense of self, there is this Afghanness about this place. And on this journey, I've seen so much.